I'd like to talk a little bit about the spray painting and why it's in my portfolio, my bag of tricks. Um, one of the things that I encourage you to do is think about all the things you can do to make your paintings better, and, and spray painting is one of them. But I'm going to tell you a little story about how I began to realize how important spray painting was. I was taking a workshop with a, a another artist who does a lot of spraying. We were using very expensive spray bottles. We were in a tiny confined space. 30 artists had signed up for the workshop. We were all terribly stressed. And at one point she turned and looked at a couple of us and said, okay, you, outside. Now it was October, it was 30 degrees. We were in upper Wisconsin and it was a very unpleasant moment. We um, went outside and started to try to make the best of things two or three of us that had been kicked out the door. She said, you know what you're doing anyway, don't worry about it. Well, I was frustrated and I was not a happy girl, but I looked at my painting and I thought, okay, whatever. And I took part of a bucket of water. <laughs> I guess we'll just see what that does to the studio here. And I, I threw it at the paper and I made some big gestural marks with it and I thought, oh, what the heck. And I started to spray. And I realized that what was happening was one of the most incredible moments of my painting life. In that second, I saw paint, as it hit water, move across the surface and shift in color. And very quickly, I realized that I had seen something that I'd never thought about before as a way to make art. I had always thought that art was only made when you had careful and de delicate plans, but I realized that in about 30 seconds, my whole art career had shifted. I didn't know then that I could make many changes in the painting, but what had happened was I was able to at least start and deal with how the painting might actually develop. I realized that paint and water started to react. I also realized that often when you have no control and when you take the biggest chances of all, you get the best results. So one of the things I'll encourage you to do is, is not worry about how I've done something, but worry about how you might make something work for you. In each and every lesson, the biggest lesson is what we learn ourselves and what we take away. So if you think it might work, if you think something might happen, and what if, go back to the what if process and see what happens for you. Now, as I work on this painting, what I discovered was where the paper was wet, the pigment hits the water and the paint moves very quickly because water is the transportation. It's taking the paint around the surface. Where the paper is dry, the paint lands as tiny little dots or pixels almost and it shifts there. So as I add more and more color to this, you're going to see that where it's wet, the color is still moving, the color is developing. Where it's dry, the paint is landing as just tiny dots, and I can allow that to continue. Now this was all well and good, and it taught me something. What it taught me was that I didn't know all the things I needed to know about art and about making art. So I still every day feel that I wait for the next lesson. As I stood there, Thinking about what this meant to me, I realized that it was an entire new way of painting. It wasn't painting with total control, but instead with total abandon. And perhaps that's one of the best lessons, to have fun with your work, learn what can be done, and then try and see what happens after that. Um, I, I wasn't sure until then. I later found out that as the paint is drying and as the pools are um, puddling, sometimes the pigment doesn't make it to the end. Now, it doesn't make it down to the paper. You'll notice I'm lifting a pool of pigment here just with the edge of my Kleenex. Here, the pigment is touching the paper and has started to travel very nicely across the paper. But here, I'm just gonna lift this off and you can see a, another way of the pigment not hitting the paper and not covering the paper as closely as it does in other areas. It provides a highlight in this area and something that I can use to make this art even more interesting. I have a finished piece of art back here, which I'll move forward. 
that was done in just this very way. This is sprayed, wet areas sprayed loosely, freely, and eventually some areas picked up. So you can play with this idea and create pieces of artwork based on adding water and spraying and seeing what happens. It's a great way to try something new and different and see what your results might be. You just saw me take this, make it work in a, in a very simple way, just having fun. But what if, back to the what if, what if you had an idea and you wanted to paint a flower? Maybe you've got an idea that perhaps an iris might be fun to paint. Maybe that would be just something you'd like to do. You could specifically paint the shape of an iris and actually create an iris-like form just meeting, um, using the pigments in a way that works for you. Make a few little adjustments if you've got a couple areas that you'd like to connect and maybe some, something like that. You can quickly make some shifts and changes with your brush, but you can also paint traditionally using this spray method so that a bouquet of flowers could be done very quickly with just painting the shape of the iris in water spraying ahead, allowing the pigments to flow and move. Even the stem is painted very quickly. And you've got an object that might be something fairly traditional. A robin, an iris, um, a rose, any of the flowers that you might paint would work beautifully this way. So don't think about these what ifs as just one solution. This might be applied to very traditional painting as well. I think you'll have fun with it.